North Carolina Department of Transportation. Remember, be smart when you cool. Now joining me on our program is again where the rubber continue to meet the road. I have with me uh, Lieutenant George Robinson and Lieutenant Timothy Mayhus, and we'll be sharing information with you from, from their perspective on the two districts that they uh, command. And so if I would first like to start out by having George and Tim to tell some things about themselves to our viewing audience, uh, uh, your background, things you think is pertinent. Yes, Chief. Um, I began my career with the department back in 1992. Mm -hmm. um, I worked in uniform patrol to take division. I was a mm -hmm. supervisor on the line, and for the past year I have been the watch commander for the North District. Okay. Um, my, present my, my present assignment is um, I'm in the administrative lieutenant. Um, it is a new position for me. Um, I got that position due to recent transfers and promotions. Yes. Um, I currently supervise um, mo monitor the supervision of records, training and recruitment. Um, I'm also the grant manager, um, and where my duties are to manage grants, yes, um, planning within the department as well as assisting budgeting. You got a large variety of things that you're involved with, and a lot of it's, it's new to you right now. I understand yes. that. But it's a large division. It's a small division with a lot of responsibilities. So you got crime analysts follow up on that area. Crime prevention is there. You got the school resource officers, housing authority. I can keep on naming animal control. So it's it's a person that's got a hands on a whole lot of different things. And I uh, certainly we appreciate that, George, um, uh, where you are in the organization at this particular time. Uh, May, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Um, I've been. I'm currently assigned to the West District as the West District Commander. Mm -hmm. I've been with in Rocky Mount since 1989. Yes. I came here out of the fresh out of the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. uh, started my my life here in, in North Carolina. Enjoyed the country. Enjoyed the weather. Yeah. Uh, wasn't as cold. <laughs> um, and during my time here with the police department, I've served as a field training officer, canine canine officer. I was also a supervisor on the line as well as supervision of the narcotics unit that was in criminal investigative division. And then I also uh, did some time in professional standards and got promoted out of professional standards to where I'm at right now today. Okay. And you have the West District. Yes, sir. The West okay. District. And so if you give me the boundaries of the West District and George, the boundaries of the North District, if y'all could do that for me. Mm -hmm. The West District, um, we start from, we have downtown included, go all the way out Raleigh Road, uh, north of Raleigh Road, uh, all the way out uh, past 97, uh, out to 97. And then we also, if you come down to Sunset Avenue, go out Sunset Avenue all the way to 64, and we also uh, incorporate Battle Park, everything to the, the south, or to the west of uh, 64, uh, actually it's the southwest of 64, all the way out over across I-95 is okay. the West District. So so you have a very r relatively large district as well, but still part of the downtown. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Chief, the North District cause it starts from Highway 301 60, at 64, mm -hmm. expands as far west as Interstate 95, as far north as Battleboro, okay. and as far east as Deer Run on the Edgecombe County side. Okay. So those two are the fairly larger land-based districts. Uh, and sure. those districts are pretty much subdivided not only by the size of them, but more so by certain boundaries that we, we thought was applicable, but also call for service and types of call for service. And then at the same time, we wanted to try to keep at least three of our districts intersecting with the downtown business district. Yes, sir. Because yes. we really truly realized at the time back in 04 uh, that we wanted officers to be a sure, good general presence and have some ownership to the downtown. Yes, That's correct. Yes. Okay. All right. So having said that, George, did you say how many years you've been with the city? Yes, sir. Starting in 92. I'm currently at 19 years. 19 years. Yes, wow. sir. Okay. You started when you were young. Okay. Yes. And I'm currently 22 years. 22 years. Okay. So a lot of experience with our, at our division commander uh, level, north, I mean, with the north district as well as the uh, west district. Well, if you would share uh, uh, with us again some of the things that you're seeing that's the most prevalent in your district, tell us why. Uh, you think or what you think is leading to that particular uh, reoccurrence and the gen what generally the citizens can do uh, to help us resolve those particular issues in their district. Okay. 
system. Uh, Chief, as far as the West District goes, uh, like I said, it's it's a very large landmass uh, area. And if you look at the makeup of the West District, is primarily uh, a large portion of it is residential. So it tend it would tend to believe that some of our most problems that we have in that in our district is uh, residential burglaries and also car break-ins. Um, the reason why I think that we have a lot of them is you know people go to work every day um, they also uh, in, in their neighborhood they're uh, I'm having a lot of problems with people walking through strangers not knowing uh, not belonging there and how we're trying to combat this is uh, one of the biggest successes I see is uh, through our community watch programs. Okay. Um, and that's what we try to get into involved, get the citizens involved in the community to help identify, you know, strangers that are coming in the neighborhood, problem spots within the district, and we're trying to focus our, our attention on some of those areas to help reduce crime in that area. Okay. All right. George? Yes, Chief. Um, in the North District, one of our biggest concerns has been the high number of car B and E's. Okay. Um, a lot of car B and E's happen as a result of people leaving their car doors unsecured, um, leaving valuables out visible, um, such as laptops, GPS systems, um, money, change, mm -hmm. um, and as well as people walking through the neighborhoods. Yes. Um, one thing that we've been able to do to combat that is by a citizen making a phone call, calling in when you see someone suspicious walking, pick up the phone and call us. And that way we can have someone to interview that person, FIC him, and see why, whether or not he actually belongs in that area. Okay. Uh, and when you say FIC, what do you mean? What's a FIC? FIC is a field interview card. Okay. Um, every officer is trained with field interview cards and can come up and talk with a person who may or may not belong in that particular okay. location. And what is what is he capturing? What is a person capturing, the officer capturing during a field interview? What is that? He's capturing um, who's let, letting him know who's out. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, whether or not he belongs there, mm -hmm. um, who this person is. The person may have a history of car B&Es, right. may have a history of break-in. We keep a database of these FIC cars, and that way we have we keep they keep a running track record in case we come across this person again um, in the future or okay. later on. Okay. So that information again is supplied back to one of the persons who was on the program earlier, with Bill Matthews. Yes, sir. Uh, his office collects that data, and that data is entered into a computer, which is disseminated back out to our officers, to our commanders, to help uh, do follow-up investigations and things of that nature. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And then uh, I would just say, uh, Tim, you mentioned the value of community watch programs, uh, neighborhood watches, things of that nature. Could you talk about some of the successes that you may have seen, uh, both of you that is, uh, with community watches, some of the values, some things that's come from that by having good citizen participation in the neighborhood? Yes, sir. Um, we have several um, community watch groups within the West District. Uh, some of them are active, some are not as active. And the ones that are active, such as the West Haven, uh, Cedarbrook community, <clears throat> we're seeing a lot more uh, dialect between the citizens and the police department, information sharing back and forth. Uh, I have I get contacted just about daily from citizens of uh, strange vehicles in the area, um, suspicious persons and when we get that information we make sure that we share that information with all the district officers so they can be on the lookout uh, we'll immediately dispatch somebody out there to try to locate that person to do a field interview card or to identify that person to find out what they're doing out there and we're sharing that information not only like I say within amongst the West District officers but also with uh, criminal investigative division and other areas in the police department um, the community watch groups, you know, like I said, has been a, uh, we've had a large success, especially in like the West Haven area. We've had a uh, over 12 percent reduction in crime in that particular area right. from the time that it started, um, and it, it takes citizens within within that district or within that community to get actively involved. Um, I would love to say that we can put a police officer on every corner of the street, but okay. yeah, we know that's not feasible, so we have to have the public be our eyes and our ears. And, and during these community watch meetings, we talk about what to look for, how to give a good description of suspects, how to share this information, and how to get it amongst themselves. And we're teaching them to basically be nosy neighbors. That's great. Very good. And George? Yes, sir. The same as Lieutenant Major <coughs> said, um, we teach in these community meetings. It's very paramount that everybody comes in tandem. That way you can learn different things about how to be more descriptive when we come in contact with these suspicious people Absolutely. that are in our neighborhoods. Um, by being proactive, 
mm -hmm. we're able to stop a majority of crime that occur within the city. Absolutely. And one of the things we, we last year our goal, as you know, was 15 percent part one crime reduction, and the percentage we went down by 11 percent, which is uh, which is I think is commendable uh, for the men and women uh, who's actually out there doing the work. And this year we've set a goal, and I call it a much more bolder goal. Uh, if you mind communicating what that goal is for part one crime and, and part part one crime overall, and what it is for violent crime. Violent crimes tend to be the one that we have not done so well in over the last several years. We're doing okay, but it must be decreased. What is it? What's that number uh, that we're shooting for? And we're gonna need the citizens' help with that. What is that number? Yes, sir. Part one crime would be 20%, and mm -hmm. part two crimes 15%. Okay, all right. And actually what we're looking at there is, is the violent crime category. <laughs> we want to reduce violent crime, ladies and gentlemen, by 20%. 20%. That, was, that is aggravated assault, robbery, murder, that type of thing has sure. to be decreased by at least 20 percent. And part one overall, the property crime section down by another 15 percent. So we're looking overall to have um, crime in the part one category at a rate of 15 percent for the violent crime issue, the one we wanted to focus on. And we're seeing some uh, work in that area already. Uh, p the aggravated assaults, what we keep talking about, we're saying that uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's an area of concern around the city, especially in the east and the south districts. We need citizens' help there where people can uh, learn to uh, get along and not have so much great conflict. Drugs seem to be uh, one of the driving factors there, so anything that we can do on the drug prevention programs or treatment programs for people that's on drugs, but at the same time reporting stuff that they see. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So ju just having, having said that, Tim and, and George, I know you're not on the shift now, but what difference have you seen for staffing? Has it made a difference with the number of people you may have now versus what you might have had just a year or two ago? And how you go about getting getting work done? Has that made a difference? Yes, sir. Uh, well, being now that we're fully staffed, um, it it helps us not only to answer calls for service, but it also gives officers that um, the the time that they're not answering calls for services to be proactive to for the officer to look in in their district and more specific in their beat and look at the problem areas such as a residence that might have a lot of problems with fights or aggravated assaults at that residence. We're trying to get down to the core of what the problem is there. So we're meeting with not only the homeowner and if it's a rental unit we're also meeting with the landowner or the property owner as well <clears throat> to try to come to an effective resolution to where we can reduce the calls for service at those locations and and then once again we're addressing the other problems within the district so it gives officers a lot more time to work on search warrants on drug locations prostitution um, and to further on uh, other investigations yes, sir Yes, Chief. Um, we're able to do a lot more with the number of people that we have. Okay. Um, as Lieutenant Mayor said, being proactive. Officers are able to go out here and actually do their jobs mm -hmm. without having the pressure of answering multiple calls at, at times. Years ago, we were steadily back and forth, back and forth, call to call. Right. But now we're able to be more flexible and able to impact crime more with the number of people that we have. Okay. All right. And one interesting thing about day shift and night, you two were night shift, all night shift <laughs> commanders. You were, and now it's Lieutenant Mo, Donald Mosley. There's this little uh, entertainment places around Rocky Mountain. <clears throat> That's a necessary evil for people to have a place to go and enjoy themselves called nightclubs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bars and taverns. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot of discussion have been about it all around Rocky Mountain. We're trying to see how we can get a handle on it. A lot of work with ALE. <clears throat> so we want club owners to be in business, but we want them to be responsible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clients, could you share with us what your experiences are, not club specific, because all our problem clubs know who they are. What are you seeing, and what is it that we are doing, and what do we need them to do okay. to try to curtail the issues around nightclubs? And Chief, what we see at our at our, a lot of our nightclub our our nightclub spots are we're getting uh, volumes of calls for service there and it's uh, aggravated assaults uh, and such. Uh, we've gotten some narcotics arrests and so forth and a lot of fight calls so it, it does eat up a lot of time for the police officers instead of out there working on some of the other problem areas we're having to concentrate a lot of man hours, a lot of, a lot of officers to these locations prior to 
uh, the club letting out, because that seems to be our, our, our problem times is when the club lets out. So we're having to devote a lot of officers time to be on scene to make sure that everything goes smooth and quiet uh, at that location. And if you think about it, if we have four or five clubs open and, and you got three or four officers at each club, you know, that's tying up officers that could be patrolling these areas that are having residential burglaries, uh, car break-ins, and so forth. Um, so that's, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to work with the club owners to come to an effective resolution to try to help uh, make their club not only be safe and a place for, for people to go to have a good time, but also so it's safe for the community so we can have the officers back out on the streets patrolling in the neighborhoods where they need to be. Okay. Yes. I guess, Chief, um, club owners, um, from my experience, if they would take the initiative to be more responsible for the people that they allow inside their clubs and be alert to things that are happening and keeping us alert, and that way we are able to better um, police clubs, um, don't allow people to hang out in the parking lots, um, being disorderly, even playing loud music. We Sometimes we get a call where a club may play a loud music. Be more considerate to the community when you open your club and, um, the, client and the clientele that you allow inside. That's right. That's right. And when you say friendly to the community, uh, it's tolerant. But obviously, a person that lives near and by near a club, they understand there would be some level of noise, but it should not be overwhelming where people cannot sleep. Uh, the, light, the music is so loud, it's making the windows shatter, and you are trying to rest. Right. Uh, that, is, that is uncalled for. And so we've had to cite various persons at clubs for that. Yes, people passing through as well yes, at nightclubs when we do that. Uh, and that's not what we want to do, but that's what we will do and will continue to do uh, if until we can get a handle of it. Uh, so nightclubs, again, is necessary. We want to support them, is that correct? Yes, so we want that message conveyed. But at the same time, if it's not being responsible, ultimately what will happen over time, and it takes time, uh, those persons will find themselves on, a, on the other end of the law. Uh, with ABC commissions will find themselves being put out of business and oh, eventually it's going to be the location itself. Um, and I know some think talk is cheap, but trust me, it's always said, trust me, time mm -hmm. will take care of you. And uh, so that's the message for nightclub owners. What else would you all like to share with the general public pertaining to your uh, district or pertaining to anything that you think is um, a value that you would like to share in closing? Well, Chief, what I'd like to say about the West District is if you live in the neighborhood, if you live in the district and you don't have an active community watch group, I encourage you to get one started. You can contact um, either myself or Yvette Jones at the police department to get one set up. And But what we're going to need is we're going to need um, community involvement, uh, people that live in those neighborhoods to get involved. We have to get involved. If, if they're not going to get involved and leave it up to just the police. Uh, we need all the help we can get. Yeah, that doesn't work too well. No, it's sir. A collaborative effort, yes. yes sir. Mm -hmm. And Chief, in my experience, um, be proactive. Get to know your neighbors. Um, a lot of calls that we go on, people don't know, don't even know the neighbor that, that they've been living next door to. Um, you don't have to partake in your neighbor activities. You may not like something about your neighbor, but get to know them. Know who lives next door to you. Yes, know sir. who their children are. So yes. when they're away from home, you'll know that person either does or does not belong there. And that has, in turn, helped me a lot in um, solving cases and helping us um, be more proactive as an agency. Okay. All right. Well, then, certainly, I want to thank uh, both Tim Mayhus and uh, George Robinson for coming in today and sharing information with our public. As stated earlier, I said no one of us is as smart as all of us. Mm -hmm. That includes everybody in the Rock Mountain Police Department of this community. Uh, it is truly working together that is going to make a difference. And then reporting those results back um, saying, doing the right thing when we all should be focusing on our call, the common goal, the common mission, and that is again to have a viable life and vibrant life in the city of Rocky Mountain. Yes, and sir. we certainly have a part in that. Thank, well, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you.